Hello, welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to AR Programming using Scala. This is going to be our last video talking about uh, for loops, at least the basics of for loops. We're obviously going to see for loops a lot. We're going to see all of these loops a lot as we continue to move forward, as all of our knowledge continues to, to stack up. Um, and in this video, I want to talk primarily about how we can put multiple generators inside of for loops. Uh, we'll also look a little bit at the, at the patterns and then some other of the syntax options. So if we go back to our simple counting example that we had originally for i n 1 to 10 print line i. Well what if I wanted to print something kind of like a, a multiplication uh, table where I, I wanted to print out all i j pairs where i and j both run from 1 to 10. Well, one way to do this would be to put nested for loops. Uh, and in most languages, that's exactly what you do. In Scala, you have the option of adding another generator inside of here. And so then I can print i plus times j equals something like that. And you'll notice that this prints out a lot of stuff. Okay. The way that this works is that this generator, the first value, 1, goes into i. And for that one value of i, j runs through all the possibilities. So i was 1, j went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. And, so, and then we printed out basically all the multiples of 1 there. After j is completed, it goes back and i becomes 2. And then j runs through all the possibilities. And i becomes 3. And j runs through all the possibilities. So the number of things that, that are, the number of times this loop occurs uh, is multiplicative. So the inner one happens 10 times, and the outer one happens 10 times. And it's, that's not a total of 20. It's not additive. It's multiplicative. So the whole thing happens 100 times uh, to print out this whole um, multiplication table. Now something to note about this, what if instead of printing I wanted to yield some tuples with the multiplication facts inside of them. So I want to yield i, j, and the product of i and j. This is one difference between um, between having a single for loop with multiple generators and uh, nested for loops. In fact, we could write this again using nested for loops. And I will put it all on one line. Hopefully, you'll be able to, to tell what this, this is doing. So this is for i goes to 1 to 10, and inside of each one of those yield, the result of for j goes from 1 to 10, and that yields i, j, i times j. Okay. Our first example here just gave us a single vector of three tuples. Okay. So it's, it's a single vector that runs through all 100 possibilities. This gives us not a single vector that runs through all 100, but a vector of vectors. And each one of these interior vectors has 10 values in it, and then there are 10 values in the outer vector, each of which is a vector of 10. So we still have 100 elements here, um, but they're structured a little bit differently. In fact, this is more like a two-dimensional uh, vector, and we'll come back and talk about those in, in the next video. So, so this syntax with multiple generators is not quite the same as actually nesting the loops, at least when it comes to having a yield in there. You always get a single, basically a flat uh, collection when you used yield with multiple generators. Um, the value that we have in here, so let's say I didn't want to do the entire table, I just wanted to do kind of the upper half of it. Well, that works just as well too. Uh, the value of j can depend upon i. Now if you start putting in, so we've seen the fact that you can put in now multiple generators, you can have variable declarations, you can have if guards. There are lots of things that you're allowed to put inside of the main body, or in, inside of the 
you know, the parentheses of a for loop. And so far I've been putting them all on one line and separated by semicolons. Turns out that if you have a lot of them, this is actually not the recommended style. Instead, the recommended style is to switch from uh, parentheses to curly braces and to break it across multiple lines. J N I two ten. Close the curly brace. Yield I comma J comma I times J. Okay. Same result. Um, if you do the curly braces, you're allowed to break things across multiple lines and you don't have to put semicolons. And so this way you can put a generator and then if you have variable declarations or if guards or whatnot, you can do that. Let's go back to, to this to demonstrate that. Let's say I only wanted the values where I is even. But then I want to run through there. So you'll note that I do not have one, one, one here. My first element is two, two, four, because this if guard prevents us from doing any of these when I um, when I is odd. Okay, so this shows you how you can combine uh, all of these different elements that we can put in here. Uh, the curly brace syntax for for when you have a lot of them together. Now, I'm showing you all of this, though the reality is that most of the time when you use a for loop, you're going to use it somewhere close to the very basic syntax. You're probably gonna have one generator, you might have one if guard, you probably don't have any vowels, uh, and you'll, there's a good chance you'll be using yield in there. One last thing <clears throat> that I want to demonstrate, and so we saw how our for loops could use patterns, this was with our point and the fact that we could pull out X and our Y instead of having to use you know, the weird tuple syntax or to assign it in a value and pull out the, the values from the patterns. Now to demonstrate this at this point, I'm gonna create something that's kind of an odd uh, entity. I'm gonna make a list that has w some weird stuff in it. Um, okay, now this is weird. It winds up being a list of any. Um, later on we'll have better examples to, to motivate this. But at least for now, um, you know, I have a list with a bunch of different stuff in it. So what happens if I run through this uh, list and I put these values into a tuple, into a pattern that only matches tuples. Well, that's not going to match one. Okay. And if we do something, uh, so I guess before showing you, what happens if I take a val and I try to do a comma b and set it equal to, to the head of this list. Well, I get an error. Now, if I were to take it and set it equal not to the first element, but to the second element, it works just fine. Okay. If you try to match a pattern to something that does not match it, uh, and you get a match error, and that really causes us problems for Val. This is why if you use the match statement, you need to have a case that covers every possibility because if you get something and it's not one of the, it's a possibility you didn't cover, you're gonna get one of these errors. So what happens in a for loop? Well, so in some ways I've shown you two possibilities here. Uh, one is that this is going to cause an error, or two, it's somehow going to uh, you know, do something else. Oh, and I can't do, let's just make a tuple. Okay. And you can see what this did, it didn't crash. Okay. Even though the, the value mixed 
has a bunch of stuff in here that does not fit the pattern A to B, that wasn't a problem. And this is one of the wonderful things about for loops. Um, and as I said, later on we will see more examples, especially in like the second half of the book, of how this can be extremely useful to you. Uh, to put in a pattern here, and if there are things that don't that don't fit it, it's just like they're skipped. It's just like there's an if guard and they are ignored. And only the things that fit that pattern wind up being run through. Whether it is just you know you have you have side effects or whether it's a yield or whatever, only the things that match that pattern will actually be processed. And that is is a wonderful thing syntactically, because you know you might have noticed at this point that this looks a lot like. Uh, the res what would happen with a map. If you use a four and a yield, it, it kind of acts in the same way that, that a map would. But if you do this with a map, it doesn't automatically match patterns, and it uh, definitely does not automatically skip things that don't match their, the patterns. So the for loop makes it much easier uh, to do that type of thing. So that's it for this video, and in the next video, we'll go back and we'll talk about what happens